unpause. Okay, so in terms of the the build order, um, the build order, your, your your first wisp, you just put all your wisps in your mine. Your first wisp out, you build a moon well, and then you put two wisps on wood, and then your next wisp, you build your altar. And you'll see I did that. Um, on this map, you're going to want to try and block your base off on other maps where um, it's a little harder to block your base off or you might get cramped up. It's just easier just to block your wisps because really either is okay. Um, whenever you block your base off, most of the reason, most of the time the reason I block off my base when I'm playing against Orc is that I can build my tier 2 buildings without any hassle from the Orc. And um, Oh, there. He just said who it was. It's Kirby. Okay. Anyway. Uh, the reason I block off my base against orcs is because um, is because uh, so I can get those tier two buildings up without any hassle from the blade master, having like pretty much zero chance of him canceling them. Um, on this particular strategy, there, you don't go tier two, so there's really no worry about that. So you can either just block your wisps off to stop a blade harass, or you can do what I did. Um, by doing what I did, you basically just protect your mine, which is okay too. Uh, now in terms of what you want to do with your Beastmaster, right from the start you want to go straight to his base. And you either want to attack a burrow like I'm doing right now, or cancel his shop, if he does have a shop up. And literally just keep attacking that burrow. Um, he loses a lot of wood by doing that. Uh, it slows his tech. It basically, and really there's nothing else that you can do with a Beastmaster. Really your only other option with a Beastmaster is to, um, is to creep those little greens. And it's really not that important to creep those greens. It's just better to harass because an orc can creep faster than you with a blade and a grunt. So what you want to do is just wait till you have four or five hunts and then you can start creeping. Because then you can creep pretty much anything on the map. And you can creep it really, really fast too. Okay. Um, so you see I actually made... Uh, three moon wells in my base. I actually normally just do two and then my third I'll build a tree. Sometimes I do three. It depends on how much pressure they're putting. But you'll see um, I put up my tree at 27 food. You want to do it then because of the way the gold works out. You, um, The way the gold works out is uh, like as soon as you have enough gold, you, you, you have to buy boots with this strategy. So you hit 27 food, you buy boots, you make one more hunt, and then by the time that tree is up, then you um, you have enough food to make your next hunt. Um, and you'll see I, I just got enough. So, uh, yeah, in terms of... So you'll see, I, after I have my four hunts out, then you want to start creeping. Uh, get level two as fast as you can. Um, but um, in terms of timing, you want to kind of, you just want to keep it in your head. Uh, you should, you should be able to know when an orc hits tier two. Uh, just from, I mean, I know just from timing in your head. In terms of if you're doing this strategy, pretty much right whenever you go over 30 food, then that's when the orc is going to um, be tier two. So as soon as he hits tier two, you want to go to his base and try and cancel those tier two buildings because the longer he doesn't have raiders, the safer your the safer your um, your units are basically because those raiders are your your number one enemy with this strategy. Uh, yeah, so you'll see my trees up. So I'm gonna creep it and. Um, once again, as I said with another strategy, you can pretty much expect to, 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 for him to creep jack you when you do this. So you want to bring at least three wisps down and start repairing your tree while you're creeping it and taking as little damage on your units as possible. But what ends up happening, like you'll see, you'll see his unit count right now. He can't fight me even if he wanted to. What most orcs will they'll do if your beastmaster is still level one? The thing is, he gets level two from creeping this. But in the case that the blade steals all those creeps or whatever, and your beastmaster is still level one, he's a really easy target to kill. So they'll try and focus him. So basically, just run your beastmaster away and let their hunts do the damage. The beastmaster really doesn't do that much damage. Um, you see, he does 26 to 36, which is like a hunt and a half, which really is not that much. So you see, that's what he went for that time. He went to try and hex my Beastmaster. And a lot of times, you're going to be able to get a surround on that Shadow Hunter. Because the way um, the way orcs work, um, they'll, he's going to hex your Beastmaster, and then he's just going to right-click everything. Whenever he right-clicks everything, you have like half a second or so um, to get a surround on the Shadow Hunter. And half a second doesn't sound like too much, but um, half a second is plenty of time whenever, you're, whenever you have 50 food hunts to get a surround on any unit you want as long as you're ready for it. So as I said in that first fight, just be ready to get a surround on that SH. And you'll see I'm going to go for it right here too. Um, you see, I can just kind of have position on that on the on the Spirit Walker, but then immediately just go for the surround on the SH. It's extremely easy with hunts. Hunts are so fast, um, and that's one of the Imba parts of the strategy. 
uh, on bigger maps, whenever they're going to try and creep, like no wood, no a no wood, most orcs are going to try and creep those shops out to get the items. Um, but uh, on maps like that, then what you want to do, like when you get your four or five hunts, you want to go around and just try and surround grunts. Because surrounding grunts with four or five hunts and a hero and a summon is extremely easy. Um, and you'll see I surrounded that Kodo no problem. Um, in terms of how you want to surround, if you guys don't know how to surround, you basically just get your units around the unit. You get your, like all, all of your units around the unit and then you just um, click, well for my move key is Q because I use custom keys. But you, and then you just mass click your move key and left click the unit and your units will surround them. It's really easy with hunts. Um, it's really one of the strengths of the strategy is your ability to surround and pick off units. <clears throat> because by picking off those grunts, not only you're going to be, not only you're going to inhibit his ability to creep that second hero, but you're also going to um, inhibit his ability to basically take down your expo. There's a lot of orcs that are going to try and suicide on your expo, so they'll come with like three or four raiders, three or four grunts, the two heroes, and um, and they'll just basically suicide on your expo and they'll try and kill your expo. But by killing those two or three grunts early, they, you basically stop any chance of them doing that. Um, if you, and if you can get surrounds on two or three grunts, then it's it's pretty much game over if you can get that at tier one. It's really hard for an orc to come back from that. Uh, yeah, so you'll see my Beastmaster hit level five because orc units give a ton of experience. Uh, it's another strength and strategy. Once your Beastmaster hits level five, he's like a one-man army. Yeah, um, it's extremely, extremely strong. Now, in terms of whether you want to pick Quill second or Hawk second, if he has Demos, a lot of people are going to try and go Demos against you. If he has Demos, I prefer Hawk second because that basically the Hawk will rip up the Demos in like four hits. It's it's Our pretty ridiculous. Um, or if he's not going Demos, then you go Quill Beast because Quill Beast actually does have more DPS than the Hawk. The Hawk just has more mobility and it does magic damage, so um, so they do do extra damage to those demos. So if they're going demos, get Hawk. If they're going the unit mix that um, Kirby has here, then you want to get that Quill Beast, which is what you'll see. That Quill Beast rapes everything. Um, now in terms of how you want to fight in these big fights, you basically just A click and you let your units do the damage. You really don't um, need to go for surrounds. By going for surrounds, what you're going to do is you're going to be anti microing. <laughs> And by anti microing, I mean you're going to be moving your units while they're not doing any damage. So basically, you're taking damage and you're not doing damage, which obviously is really bad. Um, another point you'll see about this strategy, you'll see I put a wisp at either one of his expos. Because another thing is a lot of orcs, once they kill some of your units, they'll try and put up an expo. He didn't kill any units, so I didn't think he would. But it's always, just like I said, it's better safe than sorry, is what it comes down to. Uh, yeah, so basically just keep an eye on those expos. Um, and you'll see, this is the last fight coming. It was over when he tried to push my expo and lost that fight, and I got level 5 Beastmaster. Good. That level 5 Beastmaster is extremely strong. Um, really, want if you don't hit level 5, and he is kind of getting an advantage on you, you're going to want to buy Invol Pots on your Beastmaster, because they're just going to try and focus your hero, and then let their heroes do all the damage. But, um... I, I just bought one just to be safe. Um, you really, do, if your Beastmaster is level five, they, you, they really can't kill him. They, so you don't have to worry about it. But um, if he's like level three and even sometimes level four, you're gonna need an involve pot going into the fight because they're really gonna try and focus your Beastmaster. Yeah, so that's that game. Um, you'll see the strat is extremely strong and very effective. Um, we'll. We'll go for the next replay. We'll go for, let's see. Um, all right, we'll go for the Turtle Rock replay against Claws and Gloves. I'll tell you, we'll actually do three. We can do three audios. These are going pretty fast.